everyone, welcome back to Better Buy Med. Today we're going to talk about circuit breakers because it seems to be a type of technology that a lot of people don't understand how it works or why it works or heck, a lot of people don't even know that it can fail. So let's go ahead and take a look at the anatomy of a simple circuit breaker and uh, we'll talk about some of the other breakers that you're going to find around the workplace, around your home, and even in the commercial environment. So let's do it right now. All right, guys, here I have some perfect examples of some circuit breakers. You guys are very familiar with this guy. This is a through panel circuit breaker, which you can see right here is the little rating stamp that tells you that this is an eight amp circuit breaker. All circuit breakers have voltage and an amperage rating. The voltage is for arc over. Um, it's a gap that's specifically designed into it that'll, that prevents voltage from arcing from point to point too high of a voltage and the mechanical design of the breaker itself will no longer apply because you're gonna get it you're gonna get a short uh, but it has an amperage and that amperage is specifically related to this little guy right here which is a spring-loaded mechanism that is inside the device now let's get back to the fundamentals so when you have a metal and you pass electrical current through a metal that metal is technically a resistor. And the more current that you throw through a metal, the more resistance it's going to experience, and more resistance, the more heat it's going to build up. And that is the principle that this guy operates off of. So you can see right here, this is a spring-loaded mechanism. This is one of the contact points, and this right here is one of the contact points. And you can see that how it's kind of bent in an arc, and there's a laser engraving in it. You see that? It says 125R. I believe that is its thermal rating and it's probably its expansion rate. So what this guy is, is it's two metals that are stamped together. So it's a bimetallic strip and one metal is going to expand at a different rate than the other metal. And that is going to eventually create an arc because one metal is going to be shorter than the other and it's going to go from a straight line to a curve and that curve is going to override this bend that you see right here. I'll give you a side profile. And it becomes like that. And you can see how it pulls that point back when I when it expands in the opposite direction. Boop, there we go. And that is what you see right here in this breaker aid now. So you can tell that the points that when they break open it has this little spring right here, which creates a divide. You see how it pulls on that piece of plastic? And that piece of plastic will permanently separate those points. And what you're doing when you press on that breaker is you are allowing those points to come back together. You can see the hole that's cut in the plastic there. It's a really simple principle, but you see these guys absolutely everywhere. You see them often on uh, power strips. You're going to see them um, on through panels for medical equipment, which is where this guy comes from. But you're also going to have these devices in an area that you probably don't realize. And that is a three position or a uh, breaker power switch. And I've seen these on like Pentero microscopes and a few other places. It'll be like a three position switch and you always can feel the difference. It's got that very sluggish ka-chunk ka-chunk action. And that's when you are actually tripping this guy in one of the in one of the sides and this guy here is not this is just a dual pole single throw switch but it's it's a perfect example because the ones that are a, a resetting breaker are exactly like this and the way that you know is because there's gonna be like a middle section like that so when you're on and the breaker trips it's going to be in like a middle section kinda like this and that is the equivalent of that piece of plastic right there separating the two points and the only way to reset it is you gotta allow it time to cool down and then you press it to the off position and then back to the on position. And that is the equivalent of resetting the breaker like that. You see how the points just came back together. So it's a real simple operation. It's based on thermodynamics and the expansion rates of metal. It's a, it's a rate that we can calculate based on the metals that make up the origin material. And it's a really neat principle, but it's also a principle that can fail. And it can fail because you have moving parts. It can fail because these 
items will fatigue, especially under high current situations when they're near their operating capabilities. So it's just something that you should be aware of that breakers, they do fail and they're gonna be found everywhere. They're gonna be found in power switches, they're gonna be found in through panels, they're found in wall boxes. Although wall boxes have a couple different principles that allow them the trip. This here is one of them, the thermal expansion method, but they do have a couple other methods that allow them to trip. But anyway, I just want you guys to know that these guys are something that will fail. So don't count it out when you're sitting there and it, you have something that's resetting and you're like, why the heck is it resetting? At, at the very least, this guy is gonna be found near the wall of your medical device and your mains is gonna be coming directly into it. So when you have a, one of those conditions where it resets, now you gotta shut it to the off position, turn it back on, press it, whatever. Then the best thing for you to do is hook up an electrical safety meter, put it on amps, and run that device. And if this guy trips again, you can watch your electrical safety meter and see how many amps your medical device is pulling. This particular one right here is rated at eight amps. If all I'm ever getting is four or six amps and it trips, well, congratulations, you have spring fatigue and it's a resettable breaker that needs to be replaced. Anyway guys, I know that's just a brief and very rudimentary explanation of breakers, but it's a principle that exists in almost every single breaker that you see. It's in all sorts of power strips and, and power buttons that you're gonna see on many devices that have like heating elements and stuff. They're everywhere. So guys, don't count it out as one of your failure points on your next, uh, well, hopefully you guys don't get too many of them to fail. But if you do, think about this. It could be this little guy that's wrong instead of something else. Thanks for watching.